Thank you so much for downloading the episode on the show today. Paul and I talk about a dream that I had, and then we really get into how much we love each other and the sisterhood of being sisters. We also talk about Uber complaints and our suggestions for Uber drivers. That and two driving, huggly and awkward moments of the week. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs, Jamie. You know what? He makes a lot of sense, goddammit. Paula. I'd never have hamsters, ever. Uncensored as always, it's time for the ugly truth. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. This is episode 268. Ugh! Ugh! Welcome, welcome! Let's just get right into it. I have been having some weird dreams lately. And I oh. i mean, last week we talked a little bit about insomnia, but when I do sleep, I do, I've been having really vivid dreams, and it's not because of any medication or anything. I just think I, occasionally you go through phases where you have really weird, vivid dreams. I dreamt... Well, I know what it was. Daryl was taking a shower and it was like five in the morning because he was getting ready to leave town. And so I heard the water. And Mm -hmm. so in my dream, I'm hearing water. But what was weird is I think you were there and we were talking about how it seemed like the water wasn't coming out very fast and that there was something plugging it up. And we're like, that's so weird. And then you said, oh, look, it, it, it like it flushed out what was plugging it up. And it was a giant dead spider. Ew. And you know when spiders die, they look all like crumply, especially in water. They look yeah. all like, okay, it's freaking me out. But you know what I mean. But it was a dead, like almost like, it looked like a black widow, but I couldn't really tell. But it was a big black dead spider. I was like, oh my God, God. You know, and It was awful. And you're like, oh my God. So it was a really weird thing how you and I were looking at this dead spider and there was water flowing not flooding but there was like a waterfall or something finally kind of flowing properly and so I was kind of curious about I keep forgetting because I have dreams about spiders a lot Mm -hmm. and in the dream world when you do a dream interpretation they say that the spider represents the femininity and so I said okay cool so I looked it up and it said to see a spider A dead spider in your dream implies that you have overcome some strong feminine temptation and I found it really weird that you were there like you and I were there looking at this dead spider like we had somehow championed a feminine temptation and when I'm like well what is feminine temptation I don't even get that in a crass way of saying it you didn't succumb to something that would have been inappropriate sexually and I'm Mm. like well no one's dangling any dicks in front of me lately I mean other than my own husband but i mean in general it's not like i'm i'm turning it down anywhere else other than at home so i thought that was really funny especially with you and i together there i thought that was really weird and water represents emotions so i was like wow what a what a bizarre dream although i don't think in this dream the water represents anything because i could actually i was sub you know sub sleeping and i could hear the shower running so i don't think that's what it was but i mean the dead spider definitely is feminine temptation and I was like, God, that's so strange. It's just such a weird thing to dream out of nowhere. And, you know, you you can buy into it or you, you don't. I mean, you know, I mean, psychologically, I think those things represent things. But I don't, you know, I'm not going to swear by it. But I did think it was weird that you were there and we were staring at a big dead spider together. Well, what's funny that you say that is mm. like a week ago. Yeah. I have a hard time letting things go. Yeah. You know, especially like maybe people in my past or right. things like that. Yeah. And it's not that I, I want something to happen, mm-hmm. but I can't stop thinking about the past. Yeah. And, you're, 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 yeah. And, and I'm actually the opposite. I'm, I'm actually cruel. I can't stop thinking about like the exciting time or. Right. You know, right. and the nostalgia. In some ways, it will interfere with my present relationship if I get so obsessive about it. Yes. And so about a week ago, I was sitting outside and I just had like an epiphany where I said, I'm going to be at peace with these things. Good for you. I'm not going to 
like let these things I'm not going to let myself like have these things inter like interfere in my my life. You You're going to be more present in your current life, right? Instead of revisiting the past, everybody's buttoned up, so I myself need to button up. That's very mature of you. But it's interesting you say that because that mm-hmm. you had the dream that you had. Yeah. Well, first of all, we're sisters, so we're super intuitive. I yeah. can tell tone. I can tell by tone, by uh, any. Uh, uh, I'm so in tune with actually all of my sisters for the most part. I can always tell where they are in their in their life, whether it's mentally or emotionally, or even sometimes financially. We know each other so well that we can tell when something's changed. So maybe I sensed something the last time we spoke or chatted or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. And I would not put that past it. I I really wouldn't. And it's good. You know, it's funny because some people can, like for me, I can recall memories of old relationships fondly or just as stories that happened to me, you know, memories that have happened to me when I was with another person or friends or whatever. And it does not affect me at all. Like, I don't go back and start ruminating and then in turn presently then start doing stuff. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, checking up on old boyfriends or whatever after a cocktail. I'm talking about like what you said, where you just start kind of you're really in it all the time and you're not present anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're alone. I think there's a lot of people that do that because it doesn't feel like especially if you didn't feel like you had closure. It's really hard sometimes to process and move on from something. And if something makes you remind you of it and now suddenly you're back in it and you're thinking about all the good times, you're like, why did it end? I don't understand, you know, or something like that. And everybody and you feel like everybody else has moved on. But you, (laughs) you know, it's really hard. So I'm on the I'm the opposite. I can recall fond memories of things and and then put it away and then move on. But I think I'm actually different. I think a lot of people are like you more than me. I think I'm pretty cold because when I walk away, even if I'm not the one that walked away first, I can walk away and never, never look back. And sometimes it's to my detriment, for sure. You know, you lose friends or connections. And and like I said last week, it's like, I wish I felt bad about not feeling bad. But I also think it's a defense mechanism. It you know, I mean, I've had therapy about it. It's definitely something that keeps me from being hurt. Whereas you are a little more open. And so Mm -hmm. I think that's, I mean, it is weird when you have epiphanies about yourself, isn't it? It was really strange. It was almost, and I just came out of nowhere. I I was just saying, I'm just not going to do this anymore. Yeah. Because I, I just wanted to be more present in my current relationship because well, you've got to try You got to do it all. You got to try everything. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So anyways, but it was just reminded me that, you know, that I had spider. that and you had that dream. And I'm just that like, is weird. that is so weird. That is so strange, especially that you were there. Yeah. I do think that we well, first of all, if you have a really good even if you have a really bad relationship with your sisters and what I mean by bad is it's tumultuous or you just don't get along or whatever, you still have that weird connection. And I don't mean me and you, I just mean in general, it's like Stephanie and I had, there were times where Stephanie and I had falling out where we wouldn't speak for like two years and then she'd show up out of nowhere and it was like, we never missed a day. Right. And, and we knew everything that was going on with each other within 30 minutes and we were right back where we were before it. And Stephanie and I, I mean, I love her so much. I mean, so much. And Mm -hmm. we're very, very different. And I mean, obviously, I love you so much, too, but it's different because you're a lot younger than me. And so our relationship is very different. But Stephanie and I are barely two years apart. Yeah, you and, and Stephanie have, have always been very close. And we also fight a lot. Yeah. And her her tactics to get people to leave her and, and, and walk away from her forever do not work on me. And so because of that, we fight not, a, not anymore, but when we were younger. Oh, my God. I mean, it was like the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. And, I mean, she's the one that ran me over with a car. <laughs> he literally. <laughs> God. Yeah, she was. She was abusing drugs, and she was a she was a teenager, 
And I was trying to stop her from leaving because I knew that if she left, she was she was going to steal our mom's car. And I said, please don't leave, because if you leave, they will call the cops. And I don't want that to happen to you, please. And she looked at me and put it the thing in reverse and took me along with it because the car door was still open. Oh, my gosh. And drug me all the way down the driveway. And then when she saw what she did, she started crying hysterically because she thought she'd really hurt me Mm -hmm. which she she did i didn't break any bones or anything but i had hardcore road rash and stuff i moved out of the way because i'm like well she's gonna fucking run me down you know so i ran and she took off and after that nothing's been that bad ever since but that's the kind of relationship we've had god (laughs) yeah it was not good it was not good it's healthier now (laughs) so it's always clearly Honestly, if she was here and we were talking about it, she would be so devastated. She's so embarrassed by those stories. But to me, it's like, yeah, but we can literally overcome anything. That's my point. And so when when I have dreams or thoughts about you specifically, because I have dreams, you know, you're in my dreams a lot, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Did I tell you about the dream I had that I found out? I, I dreamt that Tyler was staying with you and he didn't want to tell me. Uh, did I tell you about that? I don't think so. I had a dream that I found out that Tyler had been staying with you a couple of nights a week because he was having problems with his girlfriend. And I was like, why didn't you tell me? Like, I wouldn't mind. He just thought, he's like, yeah, but I, I thought you would want me to stay with you instead. But you live closer to his work. Yeah. And you had and you had the room. And so he'd been staying with you. I'm like, God, that's so weird. I'm like, no, I'm not mad at anybody. I just wish you I'd known. And then <laughs> Olivia had hamsters. <laughs> and of course... The hamster had babies and they were dead. Gross. <laughs> they were dead. I know. It was so weird. I'm like, what's going on in this house? Paula. It's crazy. <laughs> it I'd never crazy. have hamsters ever. Uh, Paula, don't do it. I wouldn't. <laughs> don't do it. It was so crazy. It was the weirdest thing. Yeah, but I dream about you a lot, actually. But I, I'm always thinking about you because I'm always worried about you. Aw. I don't know why, because you're my little sister. I'm a mess. Real- That's why. <laughs> no, you're not a mess. I mean, you're just, you know, you're doing your thing. You're you're living your life, man. <laughs> I mean, I feel parental sometimes. Because, yeah, I agree. But you're an adult, for God's sake. I, I just, I don't know. And I know you think of me because you're like, I was afraid to tell you. I'm like, why? I'm your sister, not your mother. <laughs> so weird sisters are weird they are weird but anyway all right well good for you miss epiphany yeah i'm glad you had that i hope that you know that that gets you on a different path you know we're always resolving issues in our lives i am constantly yeah so it's good that you're that you've come up with that i hope that i I can hope it sticks yeah me too okay so last week there was a ufc event and leading up to the ufc there was a lot of changes on the fight card initially daryl and i were gonna get it uh, yeah because i like i like khabib and i'd like to see what he's up to because he was injured for like a year Mm -hmm. and so i was really curious to see if he was as fierce as everybody was saying and then there was all this ridiculous drama that went down before the fight and um, people were dropping off the card left and right. And then so Daryl's like, hell no, I'm not getting the card. And I'm, I'm like, OK, fine. So on Twitter, if you follow, if you're on Twitter, there is all these different tabs. And at the end, there's a tab for videos. And so on UFC nights, if you go to the video section, there is Periscope. And some people stream their purchased UFC fight from their living room and they let people watch it for free. Oh, yes, it's illegal. Basically, what happens is uh, uh, eventually people catch up, uh, you know, the the powers that be catch up and figure out that you're streaming it and they scramble and they they cut off the periscope and it says, no, this is no longer available. But there's so many that do it. You can easily find another one. The quality is not very good. You're literally watching from somebody's iPhone on a TV in someone's living room, you know. So but if you really want to see the fights and you don't want to go to a bar or buy it, this is a this is an option. And so I've done it a couple of times. I probably could have gotten Daryl to buy the fight if I really, really wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. But I was just mostly curious. I wasn't really dying to see anything. So that's how I watched it. Daryl had literally no interest. He did not even watch with me or anything. So I was just kind of flipping through and looking at the fights. But you bought it. You caved. 
And you bought it. I did. Well, Ryan really wanted to see the Thug Rose and Johanna fight. Yes. But I more or less wanted to see the fight because, like you said, the events leading up to the fight were yeah. just insane. Not yes. to mention, so the Khabib fight and the Al uh, Wakina fight. Wakina, yes, yes. He was the third choice, Al. I know. And that was for a championship belt because Connor had been stripped of that belt. And so the fight between them was one of them was going to get the belt. Now, it was almost unfair because Khabib was fighting someone who was an 11th contender. Right. So it was basically like it wasn't even fair. But he held his own. He, I mean, he went all five rounds. So I know. That, that was, was insane. It was impressive. Very. Um, so, you know, kudos to him for doing that. Mm-hmm. What was interesting is that week, I think it was like Thursday, Conor mm-hmm. McGregor showed up with like 20 people. I know. And crew. all the fighters were on the bus and yeah. I don't know where they were going. I, don't, I think they were going to like media day. Yeah, I think you're right. They were doing some event. And him and his group of thugs basically showed up and they started attacking the bus. Yes. He threw a metal guardrail through a window. It was a dolly. Well, we saw the video. I, did you see the video? Yeah, it was. Oh. A do- he picked up a dolly and he threw it through the glass uh, through the bus. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he he did pick up a guardrail at one point, but they prevented him from throwing it. Oh, okay. Through the bus. Okay. Yeah. And he injured several fighters. I know. He did that because he was trying to get to Khabib, and he did that because Khabib had somehow slapped Artem, which is one of Connor's friends. Now, yeah. Artem got removed from the fight card, and so yes. Connor was pissed about that. But what what happened is because of what he had done, three fighters then got removed from the fight card. Yep, they were pulled because one had glass and he had corneal abrasions from the glass, and then the other guy he had a he had cuts on his face, and the the commission, the New York commission, said he wasn't fit to fight because right. of the cuts. And then someone else hurt their hand, I think, or something yes. like that. And like you can't fight with a hurt hand. And so, um, and Thug Rose was considered pulling out because she was just like, she was terrified. Actually, what's really funny is I had read that she was on the bus. Mm -hmm. I had read she didn't, she was like cold as ice. Like she literally did not respond at all. Like she just sat there and watched it all go down and didn't, didn't react in any way. Well, the, some of the articles I had read is that she, Dana had to basically talk her off the ledge. Because well, I believe that because she's like, what the fuck kind of organization is this? I mean, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. And so then they all ran away. So they finally got caught up with Connor and he got charged with like 12 counts and one felony or something it like was that. Just, it was criminal mischievousness is what he got mainly charged with. I think most of them got reduced. Yeah. He has to come back in June for a court date, I believe, yeah. to, be, to deal with it. But it's going to be fines and stuff. It will be. But there's already two lawsuits that oh, started for sure. out for him. Yep. But I'm just like, what the hell is he thinking? And here's the thing that's worse, the worst part. And I these are, this is the very reason why I hate Dana White sometimes mm-hmm. is he is not taking Connor off the roster. Right. He's not removing him. He mm-hmm. wouldn't. But other people that were in the group, he has taken them off the roster. <gasps> really? Yes. Other fighters? Other fighters that were in the group that day have he been, fired them. Have been removed from the roster. And oh, so I'm just sucks. like, why, why, why? It's so weird because I, don't I it's so weird because you wanna believe that this is all authentic behavior, like this is truly some guy who's off the rails and just has no concept of how dangerous his behavior was. But then there's a part of me that really doesn't want to think it, but it's so 
stay it feels so staged that's what a lot of posts he had cameras every they were they were literally filming a documentary like they they do those ufc documentaries where they do like profiles of oh yeah stuff Mm -hmm. and they were all there and they got everything and they got more than one angle and so it's like i just i'm struggling to believe that any of this is legitimate i really am now the whole pulling out of fights and all of that stuff i think that was all real I do. I think that Connor went above and beyond what was what he was going to do. I I don't think he if this was staged, I don't think his intention was to hurt anybody or get arrested per se. But then again, I was following Twitter during this hap- the actually happening as it was happening. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a couple of really reputable MMA reporters that I follow that I really like. And they were in the courtroom and everything. It's like everybody was like, oh, we're such fans like the the cops. You know, I mean, they were like when he was being booked. It's ridiculous. He was answering. He was, you know, doing autographs and all that. And so it's like, I don't know how much of this is legit. I don't really know. I can't I can't really figure it out. I don't really want to figure it out. But I'm with you in that I don't like being played. And I and I, if I really I realize that all sports, all professional sports have a layer of entertainment that they play up to get people interested I get it. But at some point, I really just want to see athletes compete. And I and, and maybe that's why I like the Olympics so much, because it's not, you know, the, the entertainment comes from the commentating. It's not the people that are competing. But this feels like there's there's soap opera. It's like the WWE. It's like there's soap operas and there's bad guys and good guys. And then there's Dana who's overseeing everything. And and they're like taking it to another level. And I just I don't like being played. I don't like being played and I feel like I'm being lied to. It's like, I just want to watch Khabib fight. Why is that so hard? You know? Well, and the other part of it is, is like Connor hasn't fought in two years. And so it's just like, is if this is staged, you know, Mm -hmm. is he going to be fighting soon or I don't know, you know, what's the deal? So I don't know. But I mean, the whole thing was stupid and it was stupid. It really made me angry, but you know, I, I thought the fight car- I'm I'm never disappointed when I get the fights because I I always enjoy just watching the fights and I know so, me too. Um, yeah, there was one fight where they had to stop it because the guy was just bleeding so bad. <laughs> oh, I miss which, that. You know, it was awesome. But oh, those are good. Yeah, you know, I I'm with you. I like the old days of the UFC where it was genuinely fights and there were no there was no storyline there was, it was no just superstar fights. or anything like that yeah or... and i i miss that i miss that but you know nowadays you know and and taking it to the next level i mean you know you, we've seen the movies the futuristic movies where you know now you're literally like we, well someone's gonna have to die that's the only way we're gonna get ratings at this point we got to kill somebody you know it's like futuristically competitions have to up the ante over and over again it's like do we really need to can't we just enjoy the sport and these athletes for how hard they work and do we really need all this other shit i just don't really want it well you it's know? just all about the money now and i know and you know, i and it's I, not about the fight and that's what i can't stand it makes me sad and you know there are uh, like bellator is actually really um they're really um gleaning off of the ufc's glossy soap opera mentality because a lot of fighters are going to bellator now i know because it's just about the fight and they have better gloves they have i don't know about their rules or anything like that but and you probably would like bellator better because it's exactly the way you think it should be where if you fight and you win if, if you keep fighting and you keep winning, that's who you fight. It's like there. It's just a, it's like a tier. Yeah. You know, it's just like a, a championship or like a bracket. Right. You know, you, uh, there's 15 guys and you just keep fighting until there's a number one. And that's kind of how they do it. And I like that. No, I, really I like do that. too. And then so. last about UFC news, Nick Diaz has finally been cleared to come back. So... What is let's, he, like 45? Let's hope to God <laughs> that he actually gets a fight because I would love to see him oh, fight again. Dude, I would watch the Diaz brothers every weekend. I, I know. Every weekend. Twice on they're Sunday. The best. But. Oh my God, they're the best. I love the Diaz brothers. I'm not a big fan of 209, but I do like the Diaz brothers. I know. So they're the shit. I would, yeah. let's hope that he gets a fight. So yes. Okay, so this is kind of a weird turn, but I found an article. Now you don't you you've never done Uber or Lyft, have you? No, we've Ubered a lot. 
Okay, so you, so then you would definitely agree with this. There was a little article that popped up. Now, Daryl and I have used Uber quite a bit. And when he is with me and Malia, we are snobs. We really are. <laughs> so he gets mad at us, but he always caves and we get like Uber Select or Uber X or whatever. Yeah, we usually, well, because there's four of us, we have to get the Uber XL. So you always get minivans. Yeah, right? we usually get the town and yeah. country something. Yes. I've told you some of the horror stories of our minivan travels in UberX. It is what it is. And at some point, I finally go, can we just get a goddamn cab? Do we have to do that? Like, because I feel like we're, we wait for Uber when there's cabs everywhere in certain cities. Mm-hmm. And I would just much rather just get in a cab and go. I mean, there's, there is something really nice about a cab in certain parts of town where you can just get in, point A to point B, done and done. And now they take credit cards. It's really fast. Yeah, but like to me, a cab is like a gas station bathroom. <laughs> That's true. That is true. The seats are rubber for a reason. <laughs> that is true. So I found this little article that Uber and Lyft drivers compiled some of the things they don't want from their customers. And th- these are the things that drive them nuts about people who use Uber and Lyft. And these are like their top things. So I'm just going to read a couple of them and then we can discuss. First one is don't eat in the car. Okay. I've never done that. I, I'm always so nervous because I'm always thinking, God, this could be the one Uber driver who's a serial, serial killer. And we're, I'm going to have to do a tuck and roll and get out of here before we end up on a, an abandoned road somewhere. The only thing we eat are the little mints they have like in right. the center console. If they provide them. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, it says, don't ask for anything but the ride. In other words, don't ask for the wa- don't ask for a water or a snack. Now, I have been in several Uber cars, you know, Uber rides, and I would say 80% of them have bottled water and candy in the back seat in like a little basket. And uh-huh. they just expect that you will take them. And they're like, please have a refreshment, have a have a candy. You know, one time we got in one. And the woman had like a full display. She had sodas and waters and like full size Kit Kat bars and all kinds of stuff. Like it was like a freaking hotel room Jeez, in there. Jeez, the I know like a whole concession stand. It was really weird. She goes, "Yeah, I just find that everybody really likes those." I'm like, "Well, yeah, this was, was like ten dollars worth of things back here." Well, they want to get a good rating, right? And here's the other thing: I never take any of it. I, I never take any of it. I don't care. I don't want it. But I think our mom's kind of like that, too. I just don't, I don't care. If it's free, I don't care. I know the kids would be like, Mom, can we have oh, one? <laughs> yeah, and then you got to say yes, except then, you know, the one kid that, you you know, he'll pick, he'll pick the Kit Kat, and then there'll be milk chocolate all over the leather seats or something, and it's just like, oh, God. I'd make them wait deal. to eat it. I'd be like, you can't have it till tonight. Or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>, dessert. <laughs> Asking the driver to drive faster is frowned upon. Who would ask that? I don't know. But you know what? I always forget how many terrible people there are, are in the world. And if they're in a hurry, if they're if they're late for an airport, you know, for an air flight or something, I can see someone saying, hey, is there any way you can go faster? I it's the one time, you know, as much as I hate Daryl's driving, it is the one time where I I release any and all judgment when I'm in the back of an Uber. I never, ever say a word about anything. Never. No. no. I, I, I can't even imagine it. But apparently that's something that people do. Don't touch the driver. <laughs> you know what? We've talked to so many Uber drivers that yeah. they have been like propositioned or like oh, yeah. you know, people touch their shoulder or they try and give them a hug Ooh. or, you know, like all this stuff. And <laughs> oh, no. I'm just like. Which what surprises me that you said a woman driver because most of the yeah. drivers are men because yes. it's just really not safe for a woman to be a driver. Let's say we've had 15 Uber rides mm-hmm. together. Out of the 15, we've had three female drivers. Yeah. This is also L.A. Yeah. And in L.A., there's fl- there are people who actually ha- have a fleet of cars and then they hire th- Uber drivers to drive their cars. Wow. It's like, a, I know, it's like a subsection of Uber. I had no idea. They're like, oh, yeah, there are people that own like six, you know, Escalades. And then we're, we're Uber drivers and we we drive their car. And then so I'm like, so they get a cut or something? Like, I don't, I'm confused. 
how that works, but somehow they get paid by the people that own the car, but they're Uber drivers too. I don't know. It's a really weird setup. I couldn't, first of all, I don't do math. I don't understand things. And so I, I'm like, well, it must be profitable because you're doing it and you're female. And she's like, the one female Uber driver we had, we were going to some event of Daryl's and it was in LA. And so we took our, a nice car to get there mm-hmm. because we we're going to be dropped off in front of all of his clients and stuff. And he didn't want to come in a Kia. So <laughs> we get out, we just, so we're in there and it's a super nice, it was one of the nicest SUV type vehicles I've ever been in. It was, it was probably an Escalade. And uh, she was talking to us about it and she's like, oh yeah. She's like, I have a military grade stun gun right here next to me in a holster i she does not carry a firearm but but she does have many protections because female drivers are obviously more at risk right and she's very specific about where she'll pick up and drop off she won't do like the hollywood hills or anywhere up up in the middle of nowhere and she was a big black woman she was not going to be fucked with anyway right (laughs) but i mean i was intimidated yeah, she's like, yeah, it's ha-. she goes a couple of times I've taken off and left people because it was three men or something. Yeah, not And I'm like, work. that sounds awful. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. Uber female Uber drivers, they are definitely I would not want my daughter to do it. No I way. Mean, not at all. Um, and then <laughs> the other one is like, don't mess with their music. <laughs> How could you? You'd have to be. In I the don't front know. Seat. I have had drivers say, hey, if you don't like what I'm listening to, just let me know. And I'm thinking, I don't care. Like, I literally could care less. I don't think I, I've ever paid attention to the music, to be honest. Well, sometimes you can't help it. I have been in cars where there have been gentlemen who are very, uh, very passionate about their country's music. Oh. Uh, whether it is from the lovely country of India. Like Middle or, Eastern kind of music. Yes. Okay. Or China. Oh. Um, things of that nature. Uh, never our people. I would love some cumbia. That'd be awesome. But no, n- n- never anything like that. We had a driver in San Francisco once. He had the best taste of music. He, I don't remember. Daryl had accidentally selected Uber group where you pick up multiple people at once. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. He's like, I must have accidentally hit something. I'm like, oh, awesome. So we ended up getting picked up by Tyrone. And then Tyrone picked up another gentleman. And then we had to go to a CVS and pick up somebody else who was getting ginger ale for their partner. (laughs) (laughs) Now, it ended up being an amazing ride. We met some great people and Tyrone was the shit. To this day, he's the best Uber driver we've ever, ever had. How funny. But still, I don't know if I would ever want to do that again. But it ended up being a good trip. But uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine going, excuse me, I'm just going to reach over and like m- move your music station to something more palatable to me. I can't imagine doing no, it. No, that's weird. Yes. So those are the those are some of the main complaints. My main um, criticisms, my constructive criticism to any Uber or Lyft driver, and I don't know if you would agree, I don't do small talk. I don't want you to talk to me. I just want to be there and just sit and just get to my destination a lot of Uber drivers say, oh, well, I do this because I just love meeting people and I love hearing about where they're from and all that stuff. And I'm thinking, that's great. I am not I am not that people. Just don't. See, Please. I find mostly with Uber, they wait for you to strike up a conversation. So mm-hmm. I could easily just sit in the car and say nothing. I just sit in the car and stare out the window and go, when are we going to get there? I get uncomfortable. I just want to be out of there. You and I both have partners that are, (laughs) you know, talkers. They are chatty. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, by the time we get to our destination, you know, we know basically like how much they make a month and, (laughs) you know, how they got started and, you know, why they do it. You know, oh, they got laid off and this is just supplemental income and... I know, You know, true. their wife is pregnant and, you know, <laughs> You've got all the this, whole thing. they have the whole story. And so I just let Victor talk because I'm just like, whatever, I'm just going to sit here. I'm not talking to anybody. Yeah, as long as I don't have to do it. And then once in a while, I'll I'll put in a little whatever. But for the most part, Daryl definitely has their life story by the time we get to our destination. <laughs> that, and that's exactly how Victor is. So one, yeah, one time, one time we were, we were in LA and um, we were driving and literally he goes, Oh yeah, I live over there. <laughs> he, just, he just pointed to where he lived. 
<laughs> that's awesome. so funny. That's great. So <laughs> but yeah, so funny. Th- yeah, so that and the second thing. Well, first of all, I mean, I've already addressed the music. I, 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 I know that the world is compiled of a variety of folks, and it's good. I actually wouldn't mind any music. I can just sit in awkward silence for 20 minutes. I'm good with it. But I get that there needs to be some noise. Maybe something like classic music or something like that. I've been in the car when they're listening to, you know, conservative talk radio. I've heard Rush Limbaugh. I've heard it all. And it's, I get it. And if you're trying to do that, that's fine. (laughs) I get what you're doing. I don't want to hear it. I'm not interested. I'm not going to be converted in 10 minutes. It's just not going to happen. I'm not going to go, you know what? He makes a lot of sense. God damn it. Yeah, really? That's not going to be me. I'm now outraged. That's not happening. (laughs) The other thing, and this is the number one thing. And even with the female Uber drivers I've had, I've never taken Lyft. I have to be honest. So maybe it's different. Maybe Lyft doesn't have these issues. Uh, You got to cut back on the cologne, people. (laughs) You got to cut back on the scent of your body. Uh, I've had it from uh, too much Dracar Noir. <laughs> too much of that. I've had a uh, Uber driver drive with his shoes off. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It. I And I thought, well, I told you the story where I literally put my face in my purse because the smell of his socks was like choking me oh my god and daryl was like what's wrong with you i'm like how are you not suffering right yeah, now really is this something you smell all the time like how are you not what? suffering he's wearing blue socks and no shoes and his shoes are like tucked under his seat which means he only puts them on and when he's getting out <laughs> like what are we doing with our lives why are we here in this gold minivan it's like, like ryan awful. we bought him brand new tennis shoes and he wore had been wearing them for like i don't know maybe four hours oh my god and Victor went to go put them on. He's like, God, these already smell like feet. (laughs) No. No. Actually, so one time we took an Uber that was also a Lyft driver. Oh, yeah. The guy was nice enough, but the van was not as nice as someone who was just an exclusive Uber driver. So I think that that's probably why Lyft is a little cheaper. Okay. Because, um... It's it's just not as nice. I I, I don't agree. know. I don't know. But that that was our experience. I've been in cars where there's like garbage, like Ew. they didn't. Yeah, like there there's barely room for your bags and stuff. And it's like I don't want to complain because obviously you need to do this. <laughs> you know, like maybe there's a baby seat in the back or something. I'm like I get it, but you know, I don't know. Maybe you should clean it out after every ride or something maybe this isn't his garbage but still one time i got into a car and there was a giant jug of water like an alhambra like a (laughs) jug of water oh don't mind that (laughs) all right here we go i I guess i have no choice (laughs) what am i gonna do it's like the size of a small child what am i gonna do yeah it's it, it it the whole concept of getting into a car with a stranger and driving you to a place that they could actually return and murder you is weird to me. But it, this is the life we live now. This is the world in which we live. So I do trust that now, especially with all the issues that that Uber popped up with and, and Lyft to some degree, um, you know, there's a lot of security checks now. Everybody's fingerprinted. And, you know, so it's a little bit safer. But I've definitely heard some stories. I, really, I'm cool with it. If the car is clean, I'm good. Just let's cut back on the, the, the drugstore cologne a bit. You know, let's, you know, please just let's not. And I get they don't want to smell. You know, if I was, if I, I can't, okay, first of all, I can't fathom it. But if for some strange reason I was driving an Uber, I can understand being concerned about body odor or any kind of odor whatsoever. But a lot of drivers are opposed to windows being down for some reason. And I don't get that either. It's like, can we just get some fresh air in here? I feel like I'm dying. I swear I'm the only person in my family that likes to crack the windows. Oh, no. Like, how do the rest of you not like some air or circulation? I need air. Fresh air is essential to life. I just need it. They're like, it's cold outside. I'm like, I I will turn the heater on, but I I just need uh, some air. I actually can't even, uh, like, in hotels when there's no way to open. That's why I like to have a, uh, like, a 
you know, sliding glass door in a hotel room. Yeah. Because like up in Reno, there are no windows to open. You're you just have, in a box. They do that thing in the window seal where you can like lift up those little slats. <sighs> I'll stick my snout in that. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm like, God, mountain air. Thank God. <gasps> so bad. I hate it. Anyway. So, yeah. So, uh, Uber, I appreciate your list. And uh, I hope you appreciate my little res- my little things. I just, you know, cut back on the cologne and maybe classical music instead of anything su- super abrasive would be awesome. Right. And then I won't touch you. So. Right. God. Okay, so speaking of driving, we have some ugly and awkward moments this week. All right. So these are really funny. These are two driving ones. The first one, when I was 16, I pulled up in front of a few of my friends that were standing in the parking lot at Wendy's. All right. When I stopped, I, I pulled the e-brake and I just locked up the rear tires to stop. So they were being kind of cool, you know, like doing that, you know, doing because they're 16 and they have their license now. So they're trying to be cool in the car. Right. I forgot to put it in park and just left it idling. So for some reason, I thought it would be cool to pop the hood and show my buddy something. When looking under the hood, I had the brilliant idea to rev it up by hand at the throttle body. You know how guys do that. Oh no. The car took off and I went flying into the engine and I ended up riding the front of my car for about 15 feet through the parking lot. <laughs> Luckily I didn't get hurt and I didn't hit anything. God. Definitely not one of my finer moments and I still don't hear the end of it. <laughs> He's lucky that he had 15 feet to go, you know, free space. <laughs> what if he went flinging out into the the streets or something? What if he like- had gone straight into the Wendy's? <laughs> or hit a friend god that could have been hideous that's hilarious that's really really funny i can just see that happening oh my god that's hilarious i know that and that's a boy (laughs) that is a boy's thing (laughs) that's something a kid dude would do thinking they're so cool oh if that doesn't show you that your brain is not fully developed at 16 i don't know what does (laughs) honestly yeah really your frontal lobe is still soft it's still soft (laughs) don't press too hard (laughs) okay here's number two this one this is something i would have done and i feel like i've done it before i just can't remember what it was specifically my mom bought a brand new crv and got the dealer option for a clear bra you know, those clear, you can put them on the front to, to kind of protect. Remember when the, remember in the 80s when, when bras were really popular on cars? Oh, you yeah. You know, like they were black or whatever. You could get different colored ones. And it was, it was like a cool vanity, but it was also, it, you know, hey, it's protecting the front from, you know, Sorry. whatever. I wasn't okay. thinking about cars. I was thinking I about actual bras. And I'm just like, a clear bra. Your mother had a clear bra? <laughs> yeah, I'm no. Like, the, I'm like, I know they have clear straps. But no, this is a, a car bra. OK. Yes. And they got a cl- they got a clear one. Okay. I thought it was factory plastic that hadn't been removed. So I ripped it off. <laughs> 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 and then the worst part is I'm very much into auto detailing now. And I still did this. So what's oh. funny is I can imagine our mom or dad coming home with a new vehicle and having this plastic cover on the front as a van like some kind of decoration or you know protective thing that you buy extra and you know when you buy something from the dealership as an option it's like 300 bucks when it's it's about 50 yeah it's ridiculous and so i can see me going out oh it's like a phone right you just rip it off right you just take this off it'll be really cool and rip that sucker clean off you know and then probably threw it away and then you know the mom came out and went what what happened to the clear Bra, what, what Jeremy? Did you see this? Oh, the the factory coating. Yeah, I took it off for you. No, <laughs> that's not what that was. <laughs> oh God, I can. I, that is totally a dumb kid move too. I know. I've done it. I know. I've done stuff like that. Do I you know, know how many shirts I've ripped holes in by trying <laughs> to take the tag off? Oh, every shirt I own. <laughs> Every shirt I own has a little hole where that is. I'm just like, oh, I'm like, oh, the tag's right here. I'll just rip it off. And I rip it. And then there's like a hole Mm -hmm. on the side. Yep. I have many like that. In fact, and then I always go, why am I so lazy that I just can't go get scissors? 
like a well, normal person. If I use scissors, then there's just like the hard itchy spot for the rest of the time. So Agreed. I just want to get a clean break and oh, I know get it. Uh, but I mean, it never works because no, it doesn't. Then I end it up doesn't. with a big hole. <laughs> I have so many T-shirts that have holes in the seam. I can't even count. I, I donate so many of those. Like, You're like oh, here. Here, because, homeless person. Yeah. Be grateful for a nice shirt with a hole in the side. You know, because God forbid I get a needle and thread it up and, you know, go on and live my life. Well, that sounds hard. Yeah, I'd rather just donate it and buy another one because we're, <laughs> we're in a disposable society now. And since we buy multiples of everything on Amazon, what does it matter? <laughs> Knowing me, I'll probably have a backup anyway. It's like, don't worry, I have four more just like it. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That is funny. So, yes. all right. Well, I think that's a wrap for this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Please be sure to check out our Amazon and our Avon links. That You can find them at uglytruth.com. It's getting close to springtime, so yes. you might want to uh, check out Amazon for some gardening tools, perhaps, and make sure you're a Prime member. If you're not, you can become one for $99 a year, and that'll give you a great discount as far as free shipping and two-day shipping, so you'll get it right away. That's about it. We will see you on Sunday. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.